Hello and welcome back. I'm Lincoln and today I'm going to show you how to make this jack-o'-lantern from start to finish including the paint. We're going to break it up into four videos to make it easier to jump around so you can learn different techniques. This first video is going to show you how to use the lathe tool and the trim tool to make the hollow base mesh to get this started. The next video is going to show you how to use a custom brush to make those crazy teeth and how to make the stem using the tube tool. The third video is going to show you some of the basic painting techniques and then how to do a mask extract with the, the masking brush. The very last video is going to be just a quick time lapse showing you how I finished this one and totally feel free to make this completely different. After the first three videos you have a good base mesh to do whatever you want with and then I'm going to have a link in here to the playlist so you can pick which video you want to go to if you don't want to follow them in order and at the end of the video I'll have the next video in line. All right let's grab your iPad and let's get sculpting. Okay, we're going to go up to the scene menu and delete this one, of course, and grab the lathe tool. Now, you'll notice over here that we have curve and we have path. Now, path, you can just click on and it will make, make an object for you. And you can still adjust things as you want. That's fine. But I want to normally, normally I will use the curve tool. You can just draw a curve, but the first thing we have to do, you notice how this is off, those aren't lined up. We need to double tap on this, and it'll line it up right in the center. Now that doesn't mean your object is going to stay in the center at the origin, but I'll show you in just a second. And the other thing is fixed and non-fixed. It's going to be the beginning point and end point. So if you start here and end here, that's where your object begins and ends on that axis. So we don't want that either. So we'll go to fixed and the spline is just another adjustment option. So double click on that, make sure you're lined up. We'll use curve and we'll just do a quick path here. Now, you can always adjust this afterwards, you know, until you validate, we can move this around. And we're going to do one other thing here real quick because I wanna be able to hollow this out. And the best way to hollow this out is to do it yourself you can use the whole option but you may not get an even even size in here so what I do is bring this down we'll bring another point up and we bring these over and this doesn't have to close that's fine it'll just spin kind of like a regular lathe would down there it's fine but what we'll do is we'll come off this blue point and come back so let's put those two together Turn those black and it'll make a nice hard line up there for us. So you come up, you can see we have a nice hollow object now just by making that C shape. Okay, we are going to go ahead and validate that now. Now you can see that this portion and this portion are not the same. So if you want to have your all your symmetry work just right, we can go ahead and come up to the gizmo with this selected obviously and move to origin, you'll see that snap up for you. And now, you, now you're in the center, because if you were to actually like put something in here, it'll come right to the center like it always normally would. But you have to be snapped to a view to get that to happen first. Because if you're off canter, if this view cube's like that, and you do a lathe, it, it'll always be a little off, even though it's at the center for you. So you want to be snapped to a view. All right, next we're gonna increase the topology. So we'll come up here and hit this a couple times is probably enough. We just need a little bit more topology than what we have. Let's turn the wire off. And that looks pretty good. So let's grab the inflate tool and bring that size. Let's just max it out. Let's just start putting some shape on this. Now that we have some shape to it, I'm gonna come in and I'll show you why we wanna split this first. Because if I come here and just put a rough polygon and cut that, you can see I've cut all the way through it and we don't wanna do that, obviously. You just wanna cut a face in here. So I'll double tap back on that, click to the front, come to the side, and we'll just split it. So I like using the rectangle. You can use a line too. I mean, you can use a line and split. You can use the rectangle. I prefer using the rectangle because you get a nice even split and that way nothing really changes on you. 
So I, I prefer this. It's easier to line things up if you want to move things around. So we'll come into the scene menu and we'll come up here and just turn that one off. Since it's unselected, it'll just disappear for you. So here you can see we have a nice hollow part. And you can see the wall thickness is different, but that's just because we're using the move tool and everything. So it doesn't matter too much. You can always thin that down if you don't want it that thick. But for this, it's just a quick demo. I'll show you guys how to do this. Have some fun at the same time. Now we're going to grab the paint tool. And let's go into the paint properties here. And you can change the material. It doesn't really matter. We're just using this as a reference point. So pick a black. You can pick a different color. It doesn't matter. Um, and then you don't want to paint all because we're actually just going to use this for a paint just so we have kind of a reference point for our eyes now you can see there we could use a little more topology on this piece so let's go in and sub to that that two more times and let's see how the paint works now that looks better okay and i'm not trying to make this symmetrical Okay, there we go. Now you can always turn on symmetry if you want and you'll paint the same if you want to do that. That's that's totally fine, however you want to do that. I normally have symmetry off for stuff like this. I just think it's more fun. We just put painted that on just so we can, we have kind of a reference. And if you wanted, you can always go up to the layers menu and add a layer and paint on that and you can just erase it. It doesn't really matter, however you feel like doing that. Now we can come up and grab the trim tool and you can, Trim this however you want. If we use the polygon tool on here, you grab three points, and then you can start adding and moving points around as you at will as you want. However you want to do it. Just don't hit the green one until you're ready to cut. Now, remember that the white is what's going to cut. If you hit the flip button, you're going to cut everything except that. So we want to keep that flip on and cut it out. Now if we go on the back, you see we got a nice cut and we're not cutting in the other piece. Now what you'll notice is that you don't get a real clean cut right there. If you want to go straight through, because that's so thick, the trim tools, and I don't know if this is true, but it seems like the trim tools, if you're cutting through something thick, it doesn't add the topology to cut through and make a cut straight cut line. So for this, it really doesn't matter too much. If you want a nice clean cut, you have to use a voxel remove of some kind. So for the eye, you know, you could use just a cylinder. We could add a cylinder. Now uh, it seems kind of weird, but you'll see here in just a second. And we'll turn on uh, snapping, turn it 90, just to make it a little bit easier to get kind of started where we want here. Turn that off now and just place this roughly where we want it. Oops. Turn off the edit mode and I'll get rid of all those nodes. It makes it easier to move things around. Squish it down. Rotate it a little more. Now this doesn't have to be perfect because what we're going to do is use the move tool to move this thing around, but you want to make sure that you're so like there, it's not quite right. So rotate it a little bit. And now you can just cut this thing out. So then we'll come up here, turn the cylinder off, turn that on. And you don't have to validate it because once you go to voxel merge, it'll do it for you. But bring this up, keep edges sharp, merge it. And now you have a nice clean cut all the way through. And if you look, you know, it cuts clean. That's because it seems like it's adding the topology between those two wall thicknesses. So you always get a nice clean cut. So now if you want, you just grab your move tool, increase your size a little bit, and then you can just start tweaking this guy, moving it around. You know, so you can, if you want a sharper cut, you can definitely use this, bring it down and you can actually get that nice sharp line right there if you want. So here, you could definitely use the trim tool again. This time we'll use the lasso for a second. You can just lasso around here for a little, just to kind of get an edge, get that cut out. So that cuts, you know, that cuts it pretty clean. 
the thing with all the trim tools, you want to kind of rotate it to view and make sure you're not going to cut the back portion right there. So kind of rotate it around. Use the lasso again. Cut this. Just cut it in pieces. It'll make it easier. It also makes it makes the cut faster on your iPad anyway because it's not using as much memory to cut as much of it at a time. Now you can see right there, you know, it doesn't cut it super clean. And there's other ways to cut. Cut. You can use a triplaner, which is kind of cool to cut something like this too, if you want. All right. So I'm going to move that and cut that one little piece off. That's kind of weird. Get rid of that. Now, once we've done that, let's look at the wire. As you can see, you know, you've got your, the cut mesh in there it is all triangulated, which it's not gonna do weird things for our next step. So we need to go ahead and remesh this. So let's just lock the remerge and 500 is probably fine for what we wanna do. Well, thanks for watching. And if this helps you out at all, please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. All right, thanks.